cannot believe how many of you are here. I can't tell you how this puts a spring in my step and a smile on my face. Um, because this isn't about me. This has nothing to do with me. What this is all about, it is about you. And the fact that you're here means that you know how important you are to this effort. You know, when they had a, a, a Supreme Court decision, or, and when Mitt Romney said to the TV cameras not too long ago, well, of course corporations are people. <laughs> I thought to myself, you know, do corporations worry about their children? No. Do corporations wonder whether or not their parents can afford health care no. under a voucher system that no. the Republicans want to put in? No. Do corporations love? No. Do corporations want to go to college? Do corporations worry about their pensions? And most importantly, do corporations vote? Corporations do not vote. But what has happened because of that Supreme Court decision is it has become the wild, wild west on the airwaves. And I want to tell you how sorry I am. I think if you knew who were paying for these ads, you'd be proud of me. I think if you knew who were paying for these millions of dollars of corporate money that's going into these ads, you'd say, you know, Claire must have done something right because they're after us. these days. I believe in compromise. Good. I believe in compromise. Now, this may not be where I'm supposed to say this, but you know me. I always say what I think, even if I'm not supposed to say it. I got to tell you that we cannot go to Washington assuming that everyone who's a Republican is a bad guy. Because when you do that, it makes it impossible to sit at the table of compromise and do good things for the American people. Right, right, right. I want to sit with Republicans and find common ground. I want us to figure out a way that we can cut federal spending without cutting the heart out of Social Security and Medicare. I want us to figure out a way to make our tax code flatter and fairer, but also get more revenue for our debt and deficit. And we will not be able to do that if we send people to Washington who think compromise is a dirty word. That will not happen. You all don't know my three opponents very well. There's been no negative ads on TV about them. In fact, only one of them uh, is writing checks to put his message on television right now. You will hear more from them, I'm sure, in the next few months as they fight for their nomination. But I know them pretty well. Because as you might imagine, you know me a long time, I do my homework. I've been paying pretty close attention. These three candidates for the United States Senate make John Ashcroft look like a liberal. <laughs> now that got a rumble out of the crowd. It's like, holy cow! How is that possible? But believe it or not, it's possible. Now I'll just give you one example, but I could give you so many. And by the way, they all agree on this. One of them has been endorsed by the Tea Party Express, the National Tea Party Group. The second one has been endorsed by Freedom Works, the other big National Tea Party group. Not to be outdone, the third one was endorsed by Michelle Bachman. They are all trying to be worthy of the Tea Party mantle. And I can tell you all kinds of things on policy that would make your heart beat faster and realize you've got to knock on a lot more doors. But I'll just give you one. This is what they said. Now, we all know what federally guaranteed student loans have done for our country. 
How many of you in the audience went to college with the help of a federally guaranteed student loan? Now here's what they said. We need to get the federal government out of the business of student loans. This needs to be private enterprise. Now that sounds good in a sound bite, right? It's kind of a new thing. Let's make sure the government doesn't have nothing to do with nothing. But let's think about what that means. I am a, a young person who wants to go to college. My family can't afford it. And I go down here to Bank of America on the plaza and I make an appointment. I walk in and I say, you know, I need you to loan me $20,000 to go to college. I'm 17 years old. I don't have a credit history. I have no job. I have no skill. I have parents that can't afford it. Now, I know you want to lend me that money, right? Right. <laughs> so these are people that are so anxious to say to get the federal government out, they would gut the ability of our young people in this country to access college. And what do you think that does for our future? They love to talk about how we're killing our grandchildren. What does that do for our grandchildren if we do away with any federal guarantee on student loans? Now that's one example, but I can give you many examples. And let me tell you, one of the things you've got to do on these doors, they are lying about me cutting Medicare benefits. I have never voted to cut Medicare benefits. Here's what I voted to cut. Here's what I voted to cut. So you know the story. And we did vote to cut this. By the way, they're for it too, which is the hypocrisy of this here. The, the, the private insurance companies came to Congress and said to the Republicans that were running the show then and, and George Bush, you know, let us do Social Security. We can do it cheaper. If you just let us do, I, not Social Security, Medicare. Let us do Medicare. We can do it cheaper. Let us do Medicare. And so they did. They said, private insurance companies, we're going to let you do Medicare. And so they went out, and they were supposed to offer a bunch of new benefits, and it was supposed to be less expensive. They didn't. Instead, what they did is they are 14% more expensive than the Medicare program, and really no new benefits to speak of. A few of them may have eye vision, but that's the Medicare Advantage program. But you know what the money is we cut out of the Medicare Advantage program? The extra cushion of profit that these insurance companies were making. <coughs> We were guaranteeing them billions of dollars of profit every year through the Medicare Advantage program. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like to me that's where we should be cutting. That's what we cut. Which, by the way, is probably the reason some of those big insurance companies are writing Carl Rove checks anonymously to run all these ads. Because we've cut their profit margin is what we've cut. And I am proud of that. And I am proud particularly, please raise your hand if you served our country. I am so proud. My dad and how I was raised, nothing has been more rewarding to me than the work we've been able to do on behalf of our veterans. Whether it was Walter Reed Hospital and cleaning up that mess, whether it was fixing the heartbreaking incompetence at Arlington National Cemetery, whether it was improving the care at our veterans hospitals from Kansas City, Columbia over to St. Louis, whether it was increasing the mileage for rural veterans so they could get to see the doctor without having to go in the pocket for so much money for gas. All of these things, and, and particularly the new GI Bill that allows our returning heroes today to get the same college benefits that my dad had after World War II. And, you know, we've also had some individual stories that have been so incredibly fun for me. Like the man down in Springfield who'd been arm wrestling the bureaucracy for years to get his purple heart, and we were able to get him his purple heart. Or the man that we met that was on Omaha Beach 
and had never gotten his veterans benefits. And we were able to get his veterans benefits from him. there's waste in the military and I know there's money we can save there because you sent me to Washington as an auditor and I know that the war profiteering that's gone on would make Harry Truman so mad he'd cuss <laughs> it didn't take much to make Harry cuss <laughs> he'd really be cussing a blue streak about the war profiteering that's gone on there and I will tell you one of my best moments in the United States Senate and this is a true story all the work we've done on contracting, trying to nail down contracting and stop. $60 billion went up in smoke through wasteful contracting in Iraq. $60 billion. Wow. And somebody from the Capitol did a volunteer stint over in Afghanistan. You can go and work on behalf of the effort in Afghanistan if you're a civilian employee in the federal government. And a, a young man that works at the Congressional Research Service went over there and he got back and he called a member of my staff and said, I think the senator would like to hear this story. We were sitting in a temporary building in the outskirts of Kabul, and they were talking about they needed to do something, and somebody said, well, you know, we could get a contract on that really quickly without a bid and probably get it done. And somebody in the room said, I don't think we should do that or McCaskill will be all over it. <laughs> you wanting to help and we've got a lot of work to do um, it will be people it won't be TV commercials it won't be big checks coming from insurance companies that want to take me out at the end of the day it will be how many people come to this space day in and day out and take a list and go out and knock on doors or make a call and find someone who's undecided or find someone who really believes that they need to reelect me and help us either get that person to the poll or persuade that person that's on the fence that they like moderation and compromise and somebody who's not an extreme who doesn't think that the answer here is to turn out the lights in the federal government and go on. The answer is to make the federal government responsive, accountable, careful with your money and there and there for college kids, and there for seniors that are on Medicare, and there for Social Security, and there for our roads and bridges, and there for the things that make our country great. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's go for